Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this daily UPSC MCQ series. In the evening, these lessons are coming. In the morning, the Hindu analysis videos they come. In the evening, these MCQ lessons they come. Every day, you are getting these PDFs and the explanations, and they are extremely important lessons. And follow them religiously. Do not miss any of the video there. So, uh, current affairs section is totally covered in these two lessons, and uh, these paid courses are available at just 159 rupees per month so it's totally affordable and very very important videos are there pocket news are trending on google pay you can download that regarding these courses and regarding the payments query anything uh, if you find it as a problem you can call on these numbers and the chat section is also given here here you can get the pdf on the telegram channel which is given on this facebook group so you can surely join that and you can follow me on instagram too from today till 30th of October, the biggest sale will be there on StudyIQ platform. 70% flat off is there on all the courses. So uh, get these uh, courses before 30th of October. First question, 20th Livestock Census. Has it been released by Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare? No, there is a separate ministry for animal husbandry and dairy and uh, these uh, livestock issues in fisheries. So that ministry has launched this data and it is certainly the 20th livestock census and it is not the annual census. This census has been conducted since 1920. So it has been almost 100 years and uh, it is the 20th edition. So it is a peri periodical data and it comes after some years and certainly the ministry releases that first statement is wrong. Second is also wrong because there is a increase of 4.8 percent there is no decline so that's why both the statements are wrong here d n is the right answer if you see the data ministry of fisheries animal husbandry and dairy uh, uh, dairying and uh, 20th livestock census it is since 1919-20 means 100 years ago we started this and this is going on increase of 4.6 percent over the previous census of 2012 and uh, for the respective categories also the data is given for the Total livestock population category, total bovine population category, total number of cattle category, all are given here. Next, Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, important ministry. Has it launched Food Safety Mitra Scheme on the occasion of World Food Day? Yesterday it was the uh, day before yesterday it was World Food Day. And uh, Ministry of Consumer Affairs did not launch it. It was the Ministry of Health because specifically the body uh, the the, uh, the organization called FSSAI food safety standards authority launched this important scheme so this was Ministry of Health not this ministry so this is a wrong statement second is correct because these safety mitras would undergo training and certification programs and they will also be paid by these food businesses for their services so it's a good employment opportunity also only two is the right answer here you can see Ministry of Health on World Food Day and Eat Right India movement is going on under that they launched uh, this issue. And uh, three important issues, food safety Mitra scheme, Eat Right jacket was also given to all the staff, Eat Right Jola was also given. Okay, so uh, they have given Jolas now. Jolas are reusable, washable and biodegradable and these jackets, they are unique and uh, they will give certain identity to the uh, FSI staff there and the FSM the food safety Mitra is an individual professional certif certified by FSSI who assists in compliance related to FSS Act Food Safety and Standards Act rules and regulation this act was there in 2006 okay, so this is going on and under that this uh, body was established FSSI and eat right smart jacket has been introduced to giving an identity to FSCI staff and they are embedded with RFID tag and QR code so they will uh, 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 give very smooth data regarding the staff and other important processes so that's important next goal program this goal program is it for uh, especially girls and it is by is it by Ministry of Women and Child Development and is it for online safety first of all it is regarding the awareness but you cannot say only girls it is for tribal women and their girls online safety is also an important component of it but other issues are also there 
So both the statements are wrong because it is the Minister of Tribal Affairs which has launched this issue. So D9 is the right answer here. You can see goal means going online as leaders. Certainly uh, online uh, when issue we are discussing then Facebook, Messenger, WhatsApp, they will be relevant here and they are the part of this uh, training program and entrepreneurship, online safety, digital literacy, these all things uh, will be uh, given in the mentoring session for these tribal women's uh, women and uh, Ministry of Tribal Affairs partners with Niti Aayog, Facebook and WhatsApp there and WhatsApp is under uh, Facebook only so uh, you can say that. So it's an important program initiative by Facebook by Ministry of Tribal Affairs and it is the second phase which they launched recently first phase was launched earlier so that's the issue and it is gonna close the digital gender gap also because there is a huge digital gender gap in, in the poor populations of india because the, the the women the girls they do not have a good mobile access but all the males they access these mobile phones smartphones and all so that's a that's a issue and uh, uh, they recently launched the second phase of this program next a fuel cell i had to discuss this issue it's an electrochemical cell it converts the chemical energy of the fuel and uh, the redox reaction uh, that goes uh, inside that and energy is created. So you can take the fuel as hydrogen and when the oxygen will be given, so it will create water plus energy. So that energy will be trapped. So this is the case of fuel cell, a very efficient system and it does not need any sunlight. It does not need any batteries replacement. It's a really great system. and. On the lines of it, they have developed microbial fuel cells also, where bacteria, the kind of energy that they are producing, that will be trapped. Because bacteria, they oxidize the matter and organic and inorganic matter, they digest and they uh, breathe there. So, they end up oxidizing the, these matters and in that process, energy is also released. So, minerals and the particular fuel, that will give energy and uh, bacteria will act as a catalyst there. So, both the statements are correct. C both is the right answer here. You can see it is the typical fuel cell, the normal uh, electrochemical cell which creates energy here. So you can understand that. And this is the microbial fuel cell. And Zoological Survey of London has deployed microbial fuel cells in fern to power camera traps and sensors in the wild areas. So this is how uh, they will be very important and the differences are given between the conventional power sources and the microbial fuel cells there so that's really really important next Sk skand gupt skand gupt a very important gupt king but he did not establish the gupta dynasty it was sri gupt who founded the, the gupta dynasty in uh, 3rd century and uh, till 6th or you may say 7th century uh, the dynasty was going on and it was the golden phase in the ancient indian history important kings like Samudra Gupta, Chandra Gupta too and Kumar Gupta and Skand Gupta they were very important. Nalanda University was founded by Skand Gupta's father Kumar Gupta 1. He was associated with that and uh, that became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2016. So second is wrong, first is also wrong. D is the right answer here. Now what is that uh, uh, context here? Union Home Minister Amit Shahji recently inaugurated an international seminar on role of Gupta dynasty emperor and in BHU this seminar is going on and he said that history has been unfair to Gupta period rulers. So again as, uh, as it has become a norm to discuss uh, histories in this country whether it is thousands of years old history or it is uh, just some decades old history and everything they want to change there. So they say that uh, it has been unfair and it was certainly a golden period some facts we can never deny this was the golden period and skand gupta hold uh, held that uh, vikramaditya title also he was the savior of india because he fought with the hoons and uh, he fought with the pushyamitra dynasty also but especially the hoons who were the invaders he fought with them but uh, that invasion was uh, really really disastrous for gupta dynasty the whole uh, money, gold, treasury, everything was lost in that battle and anyhow, who knows, they ended up capturing northwest part of the country there. But certainly, he fought bravely with these people and uh, it registered the, that uh, important invasion there. Skand Gupta, 
he was enthroned in 455 ad ruled till 467 ad and uh, his mention is there on bitari pillar inscription where the attack by hunas hunas are also mentioned and how they invaded india from the northwest and he defeated pushyamitras also who were uh, uh, a dynasty on the banks of narmada river and they were a major threat to the gupta dynasty there so he controlled them also junagad rock inscription also talks about that and the inscription states that the skandgupta appointed governors for all provinces including the person pranadatta as governor of saurashtra so that's important and coins were very important five types of gold coins he issued four types of silver coins he issued so gold coins they started around first century ad and then they became a very important uh, phenomena in, in uh, indian uh, engineering and economy and there was too much gold at that time india was the gold sink for uh, this world so gold coins were important in the gupta age as it, it was the golden period you can see the map in 375 ad and 450 ad important dynasties which are mentioned here and uh, their influence was uh, limited in the plain northern plain region then it got extended and it was still afghanistan region and uh, in the south till kalinga they were important and in 550 ad the influence that got diminished and uh, uh, late guptas uh, they were uh, uh, restricted to the partiputra region here he was the son and successor of kumar gupta one generally considered be the last of the great gupta rulers means uh, after him there were rulers but those were not great so kidarites or you may say white hunas they invaded uh, during his phase and he died in 467 these were the areas in central asia for these uh, kidarites or you may say red hunas or sometimes they are referred as white hunas also because later this area was under white hunas this much area and it was the area of uh, bactria and uh, so the central asia region the region around these uh, amur darya and sur darya you can see this was uh, the region of mongolia and altai mountains and and uh, to this region they were associated and they came towards this region this is pamir not here himalaya kunlun shan tian shan hindu kush suleman range so this was pamir not and this was the bactria region here so that's important question that i have asked in the uh, uh, last one there next question under article 169 of the constitution is it correct that state government may by law create or abolish the second chamber in state if the legislative assembly of that state passes a resolution to the to that to that effect by a special majority first of all state government is not authorized parliament of india is authorized for that if the assembly legislative assembly of the state passes this resolution with a special majority means two third people of present and voting and then this uh, uh, reaches up to parliament and parliament with a simple majority if passes this uh, uh, bill then uh, this becomes if the passes this resolution that it becomes the state legislative council in that state it's the upper house in the state and uh, many allegations are there that these are heavily misused because uh, 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 no scholars or meritorious people are taken into these uh, legislative council there there is option for uh, more and more people uh, as uh, appointed there so there are heavy misuses there because the people who are not able to win the ml elections they are normally nominated or anyhow they are reaching up to the legislative council level and they become mlcs so that's why a lot of controversy is there but the issue and the process is very very important under article 169 it is mentioned and article 16, 171 says that uh, total number of members in the council of a state shall not exceed 1/3 of the total number of members in the assembly that's correct and they should not be less than 40 so second is correct first is wrong only two is the right answer here you can see power of abolition or creation of council lies with the parliament and it may deny that proposal so it's not binding on parliament state assembly may pass that but it it may be a, a, a failed proposal in parliament so that's not a foundation there no mandatory push there and 169 and 171 
the issues are given here and the members which are elected for council that process is very unique first of all it's it's a indirect election and uh, the proportional representation system one third are elected by the assembly members one third are by uh, municipalities district boards and all and one twelfth by teachers there is an electorate for that and one twelfth by registered graduates and uh, the left one sixth they are nominated there okay i think i uh, missed that word i used appointed there and that actually was the nominated word so uh, i'm very sorry for that i was just ex explaining you that uh, uh, those people who could not win the election of mla they come on those seats which are nominated members okay so uh, they are nominated by the governor there so that's the case next it's a second house and these are these are the arguments against having a second house because not all the states they have uh, these second house and uh, most of these states they are uh, working normally without a council in the state but some states like up jnk had it and recently it was uh, uh, abolished there because uh, it is going to become a union territory from 31st of october so that's why it's it's an important issue they may ask about that the minimum uh, uh, eligibility criteria and uh, all these issues are given here these are the comparison between the assembly and council in the state next question ancient bacteria region which countries will fall in this particular region afghanistan pakistan kashmir northern pakistan uzbekistan afghanistan tajikistan iran or iraq these are adjacent areas and uh, very confusing ones and bacteria was a important region but the answer would be c here because as i explained you in that map here i was uh, telling you about this about this this is pamir not this is uh, uh, hindu kush region and here this is bacteria region so in a, another map i will show you here this was greco bacterian kingdom and here it is uh, bacteria this is fargana uh, region in uh, uzbekistan ancient uh, uh, important city there and uh, here this is hindu kush range and above hindu kush it, it is bacteria west to pamirs and it was pamir not the roof of the world so this is all today we will meet again tomorrow with many more questions thanks a lot keep watching it was a bit sunny